commission meeting uh, for today, um, November 9th at 8 or 7 p.m. Uh, this public meeting is being recorded and may be viewed later on the city's YouTube channel. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, will City Clerk please call roll? Oh, um, thank you for point of order. Uh, we are now privileged to swear in our new commissioner. I state your name. I shall you see this. Having been duly appointed to the office. Having been duly appointed to the office. Of City of Newcastle Community Activities Commission. Of City of Newcastle Community Activities Commission. Position number seven. Position number seven. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of this office. Discharge the duties of this office. As prescribed by law and to the best of my ability. As prescribed by law and to the best of my ability. And that I will support and maintain. And that I will support and maintain. The constitutions of the state of Washington. The constitutions of the state of Washington. And of the United States of America. And of the United States of America. And uphold the Newcastle Municipal Code. And uphold the Newcastle Municipal Code. And all other legal enactments. And all other legal enactments. Of the city of Newcastle. Of the city of Newcastle. Welcome, Charlie. Great. So glad to have you on board. Thanks so much. That's great. Uh, and so now, uh, we have a roll call, please. Vice Chair Stix. Present. Commissioner Van Hatter. Present. Commissioner D'Souza. Present. Commissioner George. Present. Commissioner Flash. Present. Chair Majors. Present. Commissioner Paulson is absent. Thank you. Uh, uh, so, if could is is there any objection to approval of tonight's agenda as presented? Um, well, let's see here. I'm working on a new plan, so <laughs> forgive me here. Uh, so we need to approve the uh, minutes. So, is there any objection to the minutes? for September uh, 14th of 2022. If not, we'll show the final minutes approved. Yes. And um, if no objection, we will excuse um, Commissioner Poulsen with no objection. We'll show Commissioner Poulsen excused. And so now on to the agenda. Is there any objection to uh, tonight's agenda as approved? Or as pre presented, excuse me. Okay, so we'll show the final agenda uh, approved as presented. Thank you very much. Um, 
So next, um, public comment. Do we have somebody? Anyone? Um, yes, we do. Somebody in the audience. <laughs> come on up. Yes, please come to the podium. Yeah, three minutes. Please just state your name and your um, where you live here in your neighborhood here in Newcastle. Yeah, thank you. My name is Kathy Orney, and I'm with Dr. Horton, one one two four one Slater Avenue Northeast in Kirkland. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take a moment to introduce myself, actually in person. I've seen you all and spoken with you over Zoom and or Teams or whichever format we use, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for your work and nice to see you in person. Mm -hmm. I also want to take a moment to sort of update the commission on where we're at. Dr. Horton will still be the end user and home builder of the Heemstra plat. We have partnered with Brookfield Properties and they will be doing the actual construction work for us. So they are actually here this evening, but we are still sort of joined at the hip and I'm still heavily involved. So just wanted to take a moment to introduce myself personally and the new team. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, let's, um, oh, well, thank you. Oh, good evening. My name is Jim you. Kelly. I'm the project manager for Brookfield Properties, and I'm going to be working with Kathy Orney and uh, the, the team out there with Core Engineering for Heimstra Project. And I look forward to working with everybody here and giving everybody a successful project and something that I'm very proud of. So going forward, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Uh, so do we have any other public comments? Um, seeing none, let's move on then to our commissioner comments and celebrations. Commissioner Flash, we'll start with you. Um, so we have a lot to be thankful for over the next couple of weeks. We have Thanksgiving coming up. We have Veterans Day. Um, so I hope that everybody can um, enjoy those festivities and be thankful for um, what we all have in this great country that we live in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Commissioner Jerk. Good evening. I'm thankful that uh, we can be here in person. I was saying to Shelly, this is, I think, only my third or fourth meeting here in person, so it's nice to be um, back together uh, again in chambers. And um, I'm really excited about the momentum we had with the volunteer event on Monday night. Uh, that was really wonderful to see. Thanks to Alexa and the staff uh, for putting that together. And it, it just was wonderful to see so many people um, who care about the city out and about um, being recognized for their contributions. Thank you. Uh, I am thankful to be here. I am really thankful for this position. Uh, and um, like Amy said, it was really nice Monday night uh, just to see everyone come out and I got to meet so many new people and it was really exciting. So I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> hello. Uh, welcome, Shali. We're so excited that you're here. Um, looking forward to new perspective and new ideas. Um, and yes, there's much to be thankful for in the next few weeks and months, especially ski season, so um, <laughs> let us know. I want to welcome Shally to the commission and to Alexa for a wonderful event Monday night. It was a terrific event, well attended, and uh, I want to give thanks uh, right now to a successful knee surgery a week from today. Uh, wish me all good thoughts, um, but I'll be thinking of you guys <laughs> in my recovery. I'll see you in a month and hopefully everything is going well, so. Thank you, and I guess I'd just like to circle that in terms of grateful to being able to, you know, partic participate and serve this community with the folks that are here in the room. I mean, I think Monday night was a really, like the cap on um, this, you know, year of coming out of the adventures of COVID and seeing, well, yeah, you know, we can do this and we can do this really well. And so looking forward to 
the days ahead and the conversation later tonight about planning for next year. So thank you and welcome, Shali. Very glad to have you here. Uh, okay, let's move on to our um, reports. And so, Alexa, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, so I wanted to let you all know we still have the YMCA Thanksgiving food drive in the lobby. Um, they have a donation box down there until the 15th. And you can donate, I'll read off my little list, canned fruit and vegetables, mashed potatoes, stuffing mix, canned cranberries, mac and cheese, jam, bisquick or muffin mix, and gravy. And like I said, that'll be down there until the 15th. Um, our new admin assistant started on the First, her name is Katie Adamson, so if you see her, make sure to give her a warm welcome. Um, and then our Parks and Trails planner is going to begin on December 1st, Davy De La Cruz, so very excited to have him on board. Um, and then thank you all for a very successful event on Monday. I had so much fun. Um, just a few quick recaps. We had about 65 attendees. Um, almost everyone who RSVP'd are like showed up <laughs> so that was exciting um so yeah i just want to say thank you all for your help in planning um and thank you to our volunteers um and then city offices will be closed this friday for veterans day and then on the 24th and 25th for thanksgiving so that's all i have thank you so let's um how about the arts council let's start there Okay, um, so I'm going to take a little bit more time tonight than I normally do. Um, I normally try and rush through it, but um, there's a lot going on, a lot we've done, and then I have a, a presentation to run by everyone um, to get your um, thoughts on um, a piece of artwork that we're proposing that the city purchase um, in the next couple, couple months. Um, so looking back at some of the activities that we've had over the last a um, couple of months, um, we had our art exhibition in uh, September at the library. Um, and as part of that, we had a People's Choice Award um, that was given out to the person that um, got the most amount of votes. So people voted on what artwork they liked. Um, proud to announce that Sharon Fister, who is um, an active member of our community, was the one who um, was chosen as the winner of that um, award. Um, Sharon's active in the library and is a local artist that you'll find at some of the art fairs and art shows around town. Um, and I want to thank um, For Culture, the City of Newcastle, Friends of Newcastle Library, Newcastle Shell, um, DIY, T-Lab, and QFC for providing some um, goodies for the um, package that was presented to Sharon. Um, we had, uh, at Newcastle Days, we had um, over 250 people that participated in our art project, and we had those on display at the Newcastle Library for the first two weeks in October. Um, so there were about 180 to 200 pieces of artwork that were on display there. So um, everyone had a, a great um, time doing the artwork, and hopefully people enjoyed that um, art exhibit. Um, um, we had a um, Kamishi Bai performance um, in uh, September um, at the Stanhead Cultural Center, um, and that's uh, basically a Japanese street performer. So we had a performer that came in from Japan that was facilitated by Youth Theater Northwest. They brought him in, and we tagged along and did a performance for or a, a session with him for the city of Newcastle. Um, we had a Zentangle event, and then um, this last Saturday we had a cellist at the Newcastle Library, which brought music to the library. There were about 60 people or so that showed up for that. Um, it was wonderful, and I think all the people that were there really enjoyed her um, musical performance um, at the library. Um, so those are past events. Um, coming up, we have, we're have we making um, holiday ornaments on this um, Saturday, November 12th. Um, again, with one of another local artist um, here that's been involved in the Arts Council. Um, we are making Japanese um, cloth um, wrapping um, online. Um, we're doing an introduction to acrylics class on November 19th. We're making holiday cards on December 3rd. And then um, we have um, the Dickens Killers coming on December 17th. So that's also at the library. Um, probably the thing that, uh, biggest event that we have coming up in the next couple of months is um, 
an event we're calling Newcastle Songs of the Seasons, and this is on December 3rd, and we are um, partnering with Avalon um, Newcastle Elementary and Liberty High School to bring um, some of their musical performers um, here to Newcastle. Mm -hmm. And uh, Newcastle Elementary choir director contacted us and said, you know, every year we participate in one of these things in Renton, and why can't we do it in Newcastle? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. um, we put it together, and hopefully it'll be an annual um, event, and hopefully we'll bring in Risden and um, Hazelwood and Hazen and some, maybe some of the other schools in the area in, in fu the future. Um, that's great. Um, as part of that, we are doing a hygiene um, products drive um, with Issaquah um, Food and Clothing Bank. So if you're going to be there, um, please come and drop off those items. There will also be after the 15th, so after the one um, that's going on now at City Hall, there'll be a box downstairs where you can drop off items to through December 8th. Um, and I will hand out a flyer for that so everybody takes one of those. So a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on. We're super proud of our, our team, um, and uh, we're really excited about the next couple of months um, from that perspective. Um, so on the screen right now, second topic um, is a um, proposal that I want to run by everybody. Um, please ask any questions that you have that come up um, around this. So the genesis of this is that uh, Dave um, Vandeway approached um, the Arts Council probably about two years ago. And at this point, um, the development on uh, May Creek Drive Road was um, being proposed. And he noticed that in the drawings, um, there was going to be a roundabout um, that was being proposed. And in the middle of the roundabout, there was a pedestal. And on top of the pedestal was this big N. And he said, you know what? That looks really cool, but can we do better than that in terms of putting in a, some sort of art installation um, there? And so. Over the last couple of years, the Arts Council, um, some, some of the members have had some conversations with um, Dave and um, Jeff Braun um, and the developers about putting in an art installation on that particular site and some of the logistics about weight and size and so on and so forth. So um, if you have driven by there, and you can go to the next slide, um, and then you can go to the next slide, that's just an agenda. So for those of you who don't know, um, that where this is going to be is right around that really tight curve on the road. Um, there's a, a big development that's being put in there, and the roundabout is done, and the pedestal is done. Um, so it's ready for some sort of installation um, at this point. Um, and um, it's, uh, again, right around that big curve, really tight curve on, on May Creek uh, Drive. The next slide. So this is what the pedestal looks like. Um, it's a, a concrete base. Um, it is um, decorative, um, it's about maybe three feet tall, um, and it's right smack in the middle of the, um, the uh, roundabout. I've been told that the vegetation there is not going to be where it go up too high, um, so it was designed to be um, some short type um, vegetation that's going to be around there, other than the, a few of the trees that were planted there. So next slide. Um, so this is the artwork that we, we've for proposing that the city purchase for that, that particular site. Um, this was uh, an artist that we found who lives on um, Lopez Island up in um, the San Juans. Um, one of our board members um, had noticed his work, I think was up there, and he has some stuff around his property and, and noticed that um, it would be a good fit for the city and for this particular site. Um, and so we've been working with him um, on discussions about um, purchasing uh, his piece of artwork. What I loved about this is um, it, was, it was flowing, um, and then if you look at it, uh, it is the same piece of artwork that's in both pictures. And so depending on how the light is, um, you're going to get a totally different color and different effect um, on the, the piece of artwork. So when I actually saw those two pictures, I thought these were two separate pieces of artwork, and in fact it's the same piece, um, just uh, with different lighting around them. Um, it is... Um, Kelm glass, um, and uh, it is the base is steel, and there's a steel um, steel rim around the outside, and then of course the inside is, is glass. Um, and what he does is uh, takes a, a clay mold of it and then um, fills a mold with glass, and that's how, how it gets done. 
Um, the artist's name is Jerry Newcomen. If you go to the next slide, oh, you can have this uh, or we'll be part of the notes, but I wouldn't necessarily read it. But anyways, Jerry's a, a local um, artist. He um, was trained at the University of Washington. Um, he did some training at the Pilchuck School up in Stanwood, um, Washington. And if those of you are familiar with the Pilchuck School, it was formed by Dale Chihuly back in the 50s, 50s, 60s time frame. Um, and uh, Jerry had the opportunity to, to um, learn um, and spend some time there um, uh, finalizing or um, sort of thinking of perfecting his, his technique. Um, he has um, had commissions in uh, many um, shows, um, I think in six or seven different states um, around the area over his lifetime. Um, he's a pretty accomplished accomplished artist and there's in the back of his deck which again will be included in there is um, some of his accomplishments in his um, bio. Um, he has shown it at one of my favorite art galleries in O'Connor, Washington called Earth Earthen Works. So if you're ever up in O'Connor it's a wonderful little place that I'll put a plug in for now. Um, so that's Jerry. Um, total cost for the projects so of the artwork is going to be about $9,000. Um, we asked um, him if he would uh, deliver the artwork for us, consult on the installation of it, and as, as well as um, consult on lighting. So that base is actually wired for um, electricity, and so the plan is to put lighting um, around there that'll illuminate it at night, um, and so you, people can enjoy it at night as well as during the day. Um, so um, there will be some lights or at least there's plan for some lights around there. So um, to help out again with the installation, placement, and lighting, of course there's tax, and then there's some um, potentially some mounting um, costs in there that we'd have to have. So the total project cost is about $12,000. Uh, next slide. Um, so we're hoping to get this done in 2022. Um, the city will own the artwork and be responsible for any future maintenance. Hopefully that's nothing that is um, anything substantial. Um, the installation of the artwork will be done um, whenever weather permits, or whether that's this year or next year, we would obviously have to store it. Um, Jerry will provide delivery and consultation, and the city will provide um, secured space if we have to store it for a while, um, the staff for installation, necessary hardware for the artwork, and then also um, the lighting and any associated costs with, with putting in the lighting. Any questions at this point? So I talked to Jeff Braun, and he said to present it to this to um, the CAC to see if there was any comments or questions, and then um, it would go up the chain through the, the city. Yes, Nick? Do we have the money? We do have the money, yes. There was money put in the 2022 budget for the Arts Council, um, so we would be spending that money um, to put in this arts installation. Did you have a, What's that? Did you have a question? No, I don't have a question. I mean, just to be clear, it is funded. And so really the intent was for um, Commissioner Flash to just, you know, explain the plan, but um, it's, it's good to go as long as any of us have an objection to, you know, putting that installation into that roundabout. There's always the, and I know before the meeting, um, Commissioner Six and I were talking about vandalism or security. Um, we could we could put a um, some sort of camera. There is electricity there. Yeah. We decided we wanted to go that route. <clears throat> Great idea. So. Yeah. So the intent was for you know us to for Commissioner Flash to you know present and then it will go into the uh, report to the council and you know essentially then we'll move forward. Any questions, comments, concerns? Um, I'd just like to say that um, I'm really impressed with the amount of thought that went into the selection mm -hmm. of the piece um, and, and the placement being so close to May Creek. I, I, it, it feels like it's a, a nice fit for that space and for our community. So yeah. thank you to all the, the volunteers who worked on that. It's clear that you put a lot of effort into it. 
So what would you like me to include in the uh, council notes for tomorrow? Um, I would include the whole package. Okay, so, so you'll send, send me it, everything? I will send that to you later. Yep. Perfect. Because okay. I think in the back, there's I put in the appendix, again, a kind of a bio of the artist. And someone may have a question about that. So the pictures, the whole bit. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's great. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, so do we have any other committee reports? Yes, thank you, Chair George. So I have just a quick note from the Chamber of Commerce. They, they had a, their uh, monthly luncheon today, um, and it was really nice. I got to spend some time with our new city manager. Um, so that was really nice to do. Um, but I did want to mention uh, a couple of things. One of the Chamber's um, oldest members, uh, King County Library Service, Newcastle Library, is celebrating their 10th anniversary this wow. December. So um, be aware of activities that will be going on. And uh, speaking of really wonderful places, um, thinking about all the wonderful places and people in our community, the Newcastle Diamond Awards are going to be held in March or April. They're still working out the date. Uh, and they are launching for nominations. So those are open right now. If you go to newcastlechamber.org, they have the um, nomination form available. You can nominate a business. Uh, some, uh, someone for customer service, and that doesn't necessarily have to be a business. Uh, they also look for educators, uh, a youth award, and then there are um, some special ones named after people in the community um, for community leadership. So please do send your nominations in. Um, they are carefully looked at, so think about all the people and um, businesses that have supported our committee in our community, particularly with Newcastle Days, this is a great way to recognize um, those people and volunteers. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other committee reports? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to general business. And Erin, let's have an update on the park naming, yeah. new parks update. Yes. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for being here. I'm sorry, I um, had to postpone a couple times. I had a, I have a respiratory infection, I had COVID. It was, it's been a couple months, so anyway. Um, Glad you're here. Thank you. All right. Um, oh, that's interesting. So today I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna give you a couple just status updates, and then we're gonna get on the Heemster Park. Um, they're now in engineering, and so if you recall during the, who, those were who, who were here during the preliminary plat process, we said we would come back and bring some of the design elements to you for um, input. So I have a couple of those for today. And then also, um, then we will get into park naming. Um, so the Lee Baima Park, there's, there's not a lot to update y'all on right now. Um, the, we're anticipating at the next council meeting on the 6th, um, having a public hearing on the development agreement. Um, and then once that decision comes in, then we go through a process for the actual design of the site. And they've already submitted their application um, for the plan unit development. Um, and so we're, we just gave them our comments on that. Um, and then there'll be another uh, hearing on the plan unit development and we'll be back here during the plan unit development to talk more about the design elements which you all saw back in was September August anyway um, but so I did want to address I know there was a concern about parking and um, while there are the four dedicated spots here so here's the park north is to the left on your screen um, there are about 15 additional public parking spots up here on the eastern side on 138th. And it's less than 300 feet or about 0.06 miles to the farthest parking spot to the park. So we have the four dedicated and then 15 more public parking spots. So I did want to point that out, um, hoping that that maybe helps with some of the concern. Um, Without further ado, I'll move on to Heemster here. Um, 
so we're uh, here at CAC in November. Um, we're doing the review on the engineering review permit, as I mentioned before. We anticipate infrastructure and park construction in 2023, and insofar as I'm aware, uh, building permitting and construction through 23 and 24. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to finalize a few things, um, and some of these will just be an update, like yes, we've done this, check it off, and some of these will uh, get in your input. So the design team has addressed uh, ADA access making this as universally accessible as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you can see this sort of red line here shows the ADA um, different routes. Um, and then there is a Fort Apache pad location here. This is the north um, portion of the park. Um, the stream crossing, when we first came uh, to visit you all about a year ago, uh, we showed this design for a bridge, and my understanding is that the um, DR Horton is actually going to have this kind of bridge built that has the, 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 um, the seating right there on the bridge, so you don't disrupt the wetland and stream area, but you get to have a place to stop and, and rest and enjoy the, the view. Um, I think we covered some of these items before. Uh, the seating will have backs. They're going to be made out of recycled plastic. Um, same again with the, these are the proposed benches. So it'll be those four way and some of them will be, there'll be one ADA um, bench as well, or I'm sorry, table with chairs. Um, pretty robust uh, uh, trash recycling. Um, containers here and then they're proposing this to be the bike racks actually oh. so it gives it a little bit of whimsy and a little bit of art uh, when we came before this was the layout for the park uh, it hasn't changed very much um, the and I'm including this because these visuals are really nice to see kind of what the different items look like. The next few drawings are actually from the engineering plans and they're not as exciting. Um, but so here is, again, that same uh, playground. Here are the, the tables, benches up here. Um, this is the, the, the open space area. So then we'll have the spinning fun thing. <laughs> Sorry for lack of a better word. Um, uh, the, the play structures, wow. the cubes to crawl on. Um, here's the climbing apparatus. Um, and then cool, I think this is pretty cool. Sorry to interject. But um, the applicant is looking at doing engineered wood fiber, the, the wood chips that you see at the parks, but then also incorporating some areas that have uh, artificial turf in them. So these areas with the sort of larger bubbles on them are the artificial turf, and then you have the chips within that. And I'm looking at Kathy just to be sure I entered, I was looking at that correctly. Um, anyway, so then um, these are the additional uh, uh, climbing structures here. So one thing we do need your feedback on is the shelter design. This is the uh, proposed home style. It's the modern farmhouse. Um, and we have looked uh, at three different types of shelters. Um, the two on the left are metal, uh, which is more durable. Um, and the one on the far right is vinyl, which the, the city is hesitant on, however, the HOA will be providing the maintenance and it is uh, in their deeds that if the HOA dissolves, then the maintenance will be uh, provided by the collective uh, owners of the site. So um, they will have to budget for any maintenance if, if it is preferred this kind of um, park shelter. So, um, yeah. Aaron, where do the shelters 
Go. So, um, the park the shelter to the south end. It's just one here. There's just one? Yes. And it won't be a, it won't be reserved. We won't be doing that at the park. So it'll just be open use. And looking at this picture, where are the homes? The homes are to um, to the east. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the shelter is not literally right next to the homes. It's it's at the very beginning of the park. Right. Yeah. What was the criteria for picking the three designs that you did? Um, we were looking for something that looked a little bit more like farmhouse. Um, and these two on the left um, were examples that the city's peer review landscape mm -hmm. architect was aware of. Um, so, and because they're metal, again, the maintenance question comes up. Um, this is the unique situation uh, where the city's not maintaining them. Um, and then the applicant really was trying to propose something that was, uh, that looked really nice with the existing, the architecture that's being proposed too, to make everything look more cohesive. Erin, are you looking for our votes tonight? Oh, I'm sorry. I am looking for, <laughs> um, I am looking for your input on this. Okay. Yes. So do we want to each give a vote? Yeah, we can call the one on the left one, two, or three from left to right. Nothing official. Any one of these designs or, or recommend, or if I were to say, you know, I, I, I like one of these designs more than the other, are we bound to the color? No, I don't believe so. I believe that, um, I believe that, and, um, and actually, if you all are okay with it, we could ask, um, the developer to speak at the podium for some sure. of these questions. Um, yeah. Ms. Lorne, if you'd like to come up. Good evening again. So I don't know with the um, shelters that your um, landscape architect had recommended what the color options are, but we're certainly uh, amenable to looking at other options if those are um, desirable. The caveat would be we'd have to make sure that the manufacturer has that, that available. So, Commissioner George, what is your thought on that in terms of color? Well, I, I, I happen to like design number two. Um, I like the option of the metal. Um, <coughs> for long-term maintenance. I'm not sure about the downsides of metals. I'm still you know, fairly new at this role. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it, the roof design seems to be more um, complementary to the farmhouse design that I saw in the previous one. But I'm not so much a fan of the reddish color. Um, I, I would tend to concur. I, I don't like the idea of the vinyl mm -hmm. um, and I think the one the first option um, even though that there's, there's slick lines which I tend to go for um, I just think it's a little too simple yeah. um, so I, if I had to pick between the three of them I would go with number two as well as I agree with Amy that I don't, I'm not in love with the color okay. <clears throat> I personally like option two simple and it looks like it would be very easy to maintain okay. I love the look of three it's so pretty but um, 
I think two would be the best option. But again, the, the color is not very farmhousey. No. So who ultimately is going to decide uh, which design gets picked? Well, I, um, the developer and the city will take into consideration what everybody talks about tonight. And so I think from here, unless um, the commission would like me to come back, we would probably just take your feedback and then ultimately design be between staff and the developer. Okay, thank you. Commissioner yeah. Manetta, do you have a... I like one. <laughs> um, yeah, I keep getting, my eyes keep going back to that one. Um, two looks, uh, it looks early 2000s to me. Maybe it's the color, um, but yeah, I, I do like the very simple lines. And, and I agree, Ed, that I, I want something a little bit more to it, but I still, too, feels like a bit much. I think it's the top part where the, if I have to, because I know giving, not giving you feedback is not helpful. Um, so yeah, I feel like the, the metal lines just right below the roof line are what are, yeah, it feels a a little overstyled um, for my personal taste. And maybe even the other little bars that are right up there too. Like the posts themselves are kind of nice. I kind of like the rockery as the base, um, mm -hmm. the like the ledge stone. But yeah, there's a lot going on there up top that I, I prefer the one real streamlined. And I do like the look of the three, but I, I know what white vinyl is going to look like in the Pacific Northwest in about a year and a half. And we don't want that. Yeah, I don't like that either. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. It's not as clean as, you know, Yeah. Yeah. Mic issues here. Um, okay, any other comments? So, Erin, does that give you? Yeah, just Thank some ideas. <laughs> no, that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, some ideas. Thank you. Okay, great. Erin, can you remind me how big the units are in that development? I remember. I think they're approximately twenty-five to three thousand range. And how many bedrooms? Three to four. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. So. so we haven't finalized our building plans. We are actually creating all new plans for this development. Okay. And so my anticipation would be that they will be probably three and more likely four bedroom homes. Okay. On the order of 2,000 to 3,000 square feet. Okay. And I hate to keep harping on the parking issue, but are, is there, are there parking spots in the development that allow for three cars, so people are not going to be parking on the street outside. Yeah, I can. I can answer that. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was my next thing, actually, to talk about. Okay. Um, so that works well. I do not have the the diagram, unfortunately, from uh, from the preliminary plat hearing and and decision, but. Um, that was another thing that council was concerned about. So this is the street parking, but you can see these are the lots. And then each lot has enough space for a side-by-side two-car garage plus two more parking spots in the driveway. So even though they're alley loaded, some of them are alley loaded, some of them are traditional off the, the main uh, loop that goes through it, um, you're, you're still gonna get four parking spots per unit. And we're putting a requirement um, for in the CCNRs for the the parking spaces to be used for parking, pretty much. So, yeah. um, for street parking, uh, the only thing I was uh, going to update you on here was that uh, this was the parking diagram we had before, kind of showing what street parking is available. Um, 
in order to help with traffic calming uh, along Southeast 83rd, we, uh, the uh, development team provided some little bulb outs just to create some like friction so that people will slow down because it looks like the road is narrower in those spots. So that takes out a few parking spots, but for the most part, Fennel Street parking is as we showed it last time we were here. Okay. On to the fun stuff. Not that that's not fun to me. But. Park naming. Um, there are some rules and being a planner, I need to point these out. Um, and I, I know that everyone had a chance to read these in, in their packet. Um, but it is the Community Activities Commission's um, duty to solicit input for the name. And it says um, from individuals and organizations, um, your written recommendation will then go to council and council will make the final decision. Um, and then so I, I have on the screen for reference um, the first uh, four requirements, um, which in some ways are pretty broad. Now, I was reading through the RCWs as one does for fun and uh, the preliminary plat, then this is really more appropriate for the Lee Bima project. Um, if the applicant comes forth with a name because it's under two acres and they say we want it to be called the Bima Park, then we have to adopt their name. So per state law. So anyway, um, but that's just so you know. Um, if you have any questions about the Bimas, I've been doing a little research, so I'm happy to share. Um, but I'm really here tonight to um, ask you if you have ideas for getting this research on names, or ideas, maybe not research, but names from individuals and organizations. Um, have you had any thoughts? Since you got your packet? And if not, we can talk. I've, I've got a couple, but uh, I didn't want to put that out there because it's your charge. No? No? Okay. I'm sorry, you're, you're asking about the process? I'm asking about, yeah, how, um, how does the commission, or does the commission have ideas on how to solicit input from individuals and organizations on the park? name well so you you have me thinking about how big is this park is it under two acres it's uh, about six six acres this is okay Heenstra. sorry I should clarify this is for the Heenster Park um, not Levi Ma. got it so some things that have come up um, maybe to get some wheels turning is uh, the um, the owners would, or the previous owners, the Heenster family, had put forth the idea of the Heenster Nature Preserve. Um, not knowing if that is, if that makes sense for the entire park or maybe a portion of the park, that's something we can do because we can name portions of the park. So there's the, there's actually the part where you get into the critical areas, you know, there's an overlook. Is there something that we can do to help, you know, to commemorate the family who was there for so long. Um, uh, I know Mayor Newing uh, had the idea of Gene Garber Park. Gene Garber was our first mayor of the city. Um, we will be having, what we could do is have a session where maybe there's some brainstorming on names um, and we go out to the public with a some sort of survey and put out you know an electronic form google form and say okay we have these four names plus write in your own or something like that and we have a long time to do this um you know we really don't have until we have the sign to put in you know so we have until the end of next year basically to, well let's say mid next year to do this well, yeah, let's say mid-2023, just to 
be safe, but I, I would say closer to the third quarter. Um, so we have some time. Um, are there families that you know who have been here a long time? I mean, there's the Arts Council, there's the Historic um, Society. Are there other um, organizations who might just have some thoughts that could be reached out to? The Chamber. Well, just one of the things I'm thinking about is this is a West Side Park, and I know that this is something that's been cried for for a long right, time. Right. Um, so making sure that our input, uh, you know, our, our outreach specifically targets those who live on the west side of the city um, and who have been underrepresented in our park system. I don't know that there's any specific group tied to that. Um, we do have a couple. We have a couple representatives mm -hmm. that uh, uh, are on our neighborhood committee. I like the idea of, of having people from the west side participate, having some type of a survey uh, get some ideas from them. I think it's a great idea. Um, I don't have any ideas of names, but I, I, I think it would be better if a group of people came up with five ideas and then let people vote on them instead of uh, free for all. Because I think that would get a little overwhelming. But I like the idea of Google Forms. I've used it before at mm -hmm. the kids' schools to vote on certain things, and it's easy. Um, I would, I, I know I've told Patty I love the idea of having kids involved. So I would mm -hmm. ask the schools uh, to maybe vote as well. I really like the idea of involving the schools too. It's a great way for the kids to be involved in their own community and to see a public process through. So it, I, I realize our kids come from three different communities <laughs> and then go to three different communities for school, but I, I, I think if we can come up with a way to involve them, not solely just the kids, <laughs> but to involve them, I think that would be great um, to do. It's well, I think providing them with uh, the parameters of, you know, what the policy is for the city of Newcastle. You know, we all remember Bodie McBoatface. Um, <laughs> So we want to caution against that, but like Shelly said, providing the parameters and giving people a limited set of choices that we can all live with um, kind of helps to avoid, you know, having something that's too far out there. No, I don't know if we've done anything like this. I can't remember anything where we've solicited names as a community, but I've only been here 10 years. Um, Renton School District just did it for their new elementary school, so I don't know if there's a way to reach out and see what worked well for their process and what didn't. I know that they, they followed a similar process when they named Risden, and then the kids, yeah, so the kids actually got to choose the school colors, and, and, and that was pretty neat, but they, someone at um, the school district may have some ideas on how to run a contest, yeah, I like that. or run a input session, input Um, and the other thing I should mention is that uh, our comprehensive plan, which is you know, the big city plan, that whole outreach process is going to kick off in January, and we could somehow tie this oh, in. Oh, I think that would be good. With that. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure the library would be willing to partner mm -hmm. with us also. If I may, I, I feel like there are a lot of sort of potential names, <laughs> obviously, that could that could come up. Um, and with trying to rein this in a little bit, um, do you, any of you feel that there's any sort of research on the city that would possibly be helpful um, to start coming forward with uh, maybe some suggestions 
um, before we get Bogey McBogey's. <laughs> um, um, do you, any of you? No, I can. This is where we need Diane. <laughs> What's that? This is where we need Diane. Well, and I guess I was just thinking maybe if we met her, I'm not sure how this, how the kids would relate, but if we wanted to focus on like city leaders mm -hmm. or, you know, leaders, historical leaders, like for example, Dean Garber was, you know, really an important part of our, you know, coming together as a city. Are there others? And, I, mean, I think it's probably maybe a little, I don't know how that the kids would relate to that, but um, you know, perhaps bringing a historical component to that um, might at least provide a focus. Well, I think it would be fun too to analyze our current park names. Um, you know, we've got obviously Lake Bourne, like we, we've got the ones that are named after the geological features. We've got yeah. uh, yeah, I mean, China Creek, there's tons of parks named after the thing that, or the space that they're in. And so maybe kind of having a tally, if we look at our criterion, or um, like, at what's the balance, right? Are, are, do, are we, do we have an imbalance of ge geographical features and not that many historical figures? And, you know, maybe, so then it's like, well, gosh, do we want to bring greater balance to yeah. our naming and so let's honor someone historical versus naming it after the place where it's located or the trees that are around it or whatever so something to think about yeah no I think that's a great totally yeah I think that's so I would propose that we just solicit input from the public and then those things a committee considers mm -hmm. um you know, but I would start with just asking everybody what if we had a, if you had a park, and maybe it's okay that you get Bodie. You know, and, and that and that becomes one you just automatically throw out, right? But I would I would you know when whenever you do a brainstorming session, at least this is what I was taught, right? There's no criteria. Yeah. There's no, there's no right from the very beginning, and then you narrow it down after a while. So. Um, I would propose that we just throw it out there and say we're named. We have a new park. We need to name it. Can you provide public input? And then we have a committee that reviews them all and sets the criteria and you know goes about that. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and I think between the the newsletter, the city's website, it would it shouldn't be too hard to be able to gather that data and get the word out there. So um, yeah. okay, we'll start there. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. So yeah. I have a question for Aaron. Aaron, I do the recaps for council after this meeting. Is there anything you'd like me to include, or will you be providing the same information to council at their next meeting? Um, we do have our new director, Mark Hoffman, who I don't know if any of you have been able to meet him, but um, he started a couple months ago. So. Um, if you would like to include the portion about you know working on park naming, um, that would that'd be great. So just the park naming. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I've got a question about the Heemstra. Um, when we met the last time, and I asked for some art elements, which is great. I love the um, beliefs. I think that's really cool. Um, you had also mentioned that maybe we could do some um, designs in the concrete. Is that part of the plan too? Okay, um, I did see that they put aside the locations for stamped concrete on the plans. Uh, I haven't been provided a detail yet, um, but um, I could either come back with an update on that um, if you like. Okay. Okay, anything else for Aaron? No. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, volunteer recognition debrief. Well, I think we've had some comments already, which pretty much summarizes um, that 
the event on Monday, and I'd just like to thank everyone in the room for your contribution. Um, yes, thanks to, to you all for coming tonight. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, I, you know, I think, Alexa, you did an amazing job of doing the dance <laughs> and just taking and, and making it run. And I think Kim with, uh, the, you know, Kim and Nathan both with the challenges of no mic. And it, you know, I think all of us like initially it's like, oh, well, is this going to work? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it actually was, was worked out just fine. So the feedback that I've received, I've had several emails from uh, participants about it was a party, you know, and I think that was really fun for us to have a moment of celebration after some challenging, a couple challenging years, and um, so all the bits just came together, and I just, you know, appreciate every, each one of you and your contribution to, to making that happen. So, does anybody else have any additional? Um... Yeah, I just want to reiterate. I, the feedback I got was everybody loved it, didn't have a really great time, and appreciated the, um, the thank you, right, for their time and yeah. their efforts um, yeah. that they had put forth to the city. So, to, to the city. So, um, yep, I thought it was a great event. Yeah. And I, and I think you know, I get periodically feedback of you know, can we have it in a restaurant that's actually physically located in Newcastle, but we just don't have a facility like that and resonate, you know, has that they're closed on Mondays and so it's dedicated and I mean it was a really good event for them and I just really appreciate that because they're so supportive, you know, of us uh, throughout the year. Um, so you can at least affirm it's owned by a Newcastle resident. It is owned, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 exactly. Well, and it's a comfortable restaurant. It, it's easy to get around, and everybody can yeah. get to the food and drink and talk and yeah. And, yeah, you know, been so accommodating. It is owned by a Newcastle resident. I think that's a really important, you know, point to. And, and there have been some years when we've been pushed to make the minimum, and we didn't have an issue this year. <laughs> so. So it was all good. So thank you. So that was just like kind of a nice period to the end of our year. And now we get to look forward to 2023. So Mr. Vice Chair Sticks, if you could thank lead you. us through this conversation. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> Everybody has handouts of what we did in 2022 in our work plan and the presentation that we actually gave to council. Um, for tonight's discussion, I really wanted to simply um, ask you to think about what our goals were in putting this together. Um, we did an offsite in 2018 to create this. And then in 2019, we basically adopted it. Um, and then we've done what I like to call the rinse and repeat. We didn't feel it was necessary to reinvent the wheel and come up with a different um, outline. We also, I believe, felt that the strategic directions that we had originally come up with, came up with were still valid and could take us year after year without having to come up with um, uh, new goals. Uh, the purpose of what we want to do tonight is not to actually go through this in detail, but to start thinking about it. We have um, a presentation that we're going to give to council in January is currently the plan. So that also gives us time to work in our little subgroups if we want to do that um, again. Um, second, gives us December and January CAC meeting time to finalize what we want to present to council in January. So I basically just wanted to open it up for discussion. Um, do we still like the three strategic directions, which I will quickly review. Very, um, number one was fostering community interaction. Two, stimulating creative and interactive engagement. 
and three, celebrating and appreciating our community. Um, so with that, I thought I would just open it up for discussion, see if we still like our strategic direction format. Do we like the three strategic directions and do we want to um, divide and go into our little subcommittees like we've done in the past? Jeopardy, can we do the little music while everybody's thinking about the final answer? So I like, so this is my second year because last year was my first year with these. Um, I, I like the three strategic directions and I like the bullets underneath them, but coming in off of last year, I feel like we don't have a lot of concrete, actionable things connected to this. And that, as a commissioner, is what I'm missing. And I know that's what I need to bring to the table. Um, this year being sort of unusual in that basically <laughs> we were able to focus on doing one activity really, really well mm -hmm. and, and a very important, meaningful activity with um, Newcastle Days. But now that we are, are better staffed and supported with staff, I, I would love to see if we can build this out a little bit or tweak it a little bit so that we have concrete, actionable things that we want to do over the year. So it's one thing for us to say to connect with the community through CAC outreach. Like, what's one concrete thing we can do to that end? Um, and I think that's where, where I'm, I'm left with at this point. So I think um, we have two objectives here. Or, or this is The first is with our conversation. So we have a joint meeting with council in January. And that really is mostly about the what. So it's not specifically about how we're going to accomplish. So if we get focused, and of course we can have some examples and some ideas that we're thinking about, but the idea here is to, for our conversation with council, is, is this is the direction that we want to go, and then we can get specific around how we're going to accomplish that, to your point. If you know if that helps, it's the you know, we're giving council the broadside of the barn, <laughs> and then we'll we'll get down to the details. Does that help, Mimi? It it does in terms of what we need to present to council versus what we need to do as a commission. And I think then we have an opportunity to what are the you know, where are we going to focus and how are we going to make that happen? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I agree with what you said, and Pat, I agree with what you said. My only um, caution would be that um, I didn't want to wait till we present to council to then start the discussion about what we're doing. Because by the time we do that, then we're already into February and we've lost potentially a third of the year. Well, so our, well, our meeting will be the second Tuesday in January. That's okay. when we were meeting with council for the joint meeting. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we've already had our January CAC meeting at that point, correct? Correct. Okay, so then we're talking about February when we start talking about what, and then it takes another month to plan stuff, and so now we're going to March. And so I... So I think if, and not to interrupt you, but I think this may be an opportunity for now that we're back in the sort of swing of things and not the, not hampered by COVID, that we have small groups and we may need to meet as small groups maybe once or twice a month independent of our CAC meetings. So I think there's some, you know, work that we can do that, that doesn't, have to all happen on our at our CSE meetings. 
totally get your, you know, appreciate your point. Um, and so, you know, we need to figure out as a group what works best for us to make that happen. I also like the idea of having um, our commission meetings where we're going through our agendas. But if we've got the bandwidth, it's also having a working session mm -hmm. where we can actually, like, stop the meeting, stop the recording, and then sit down and actually have working sessions where we're starting to brainstorm ideas and we've got Alexa now with some really great new fun things that we can be thinking about that maybe we've never thought about but to your point Ed it's starting to come up with what are those what's the how how are we going to do these things and we've done that in the past and I thought that worked effectively um, and we're all here so it makes sense to yep. you know to focus on that so, I mean, the option that we could plan for this in December, you know, we could have, you know, really focus and, and Nathan and I have talked about this in terms of having a working session at our December meeting. I won't be in this at December's oh, meeting. you won't. Well, yeah. Yeah. But that's fine. I mean, I can participate yeah, yeah, yeah. elsewhere, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. It's yeah. a choir concert. That's right. It's got a... And, and it's a it's an iterative process. So even though you're going to miss December, yeah. that doesn't mean that everything's going to be decided at that, that point. So. so I think first, if, if we can agree that we still think we want to have three strategic directions and we like what those directions are, then... My vote this year is that we would mix up the, the groups a little bit, get some fresh eyes on some of the existing ideas and get some people that haven't partnered together um, to then start some brainstorming sessions. Would you guys like that idea? Mm -hmm. So I've taken a, a stab at it. I'm just kidding. I haven't taken a stab at it yet. No, I'm just kidding. I haven't done that. Well, what would you suggest? Oh, the pressure. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. Any any volunteers for the three directions? Commissioner Flash, what do you think? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go right around the table here. Uh, are you are you asking for? Pick one. Pick, pick one. Okay. Yeah, pick one. Um, I would say, let's see. So I had number two previously. Um, I would go with number three. Number three? Okay. Commissioner George? I had number three last year. However, it, I do think <laughs> I, I am owed an opportunity to improve upon um, past efforts. So I do like number three, but I also really like um, number one. Number one then? Shelly, I'm going to have you go last, give you a few minutes to, to kind of ponder those since it's your first time probably even seeing these. Yeah. So I understand one, I understand two. I don't understand what three uh, entails. Like what are the, the things that we would do in three? Is this Newcastle Days and concerts in the park? So one of the things our strategic directions kind of overlap in, in many ways. And so they have very similar outcomes. I think what it helped us to do was to dig deeper into some of the events that we had planned, like a Newcastle Day. So what are some of the things that um, could make Newcastle Days even more special in appreciating the community, for instance? And I think the Arts Council is a good example of having coloring uh, books at 
Newcastle days or the library bringing um, storytellers, uh, things like that. So it's more of a, each thing doesn't have a unique set of goals to it. They do overlap a lot. We know that. Okay, then I will uh, go last. <laughs> <laughs> Patty? You assign it. Oh, jeez. Patty, I'm going to put you with Amy in strategic number one, and I'm going to put myself with Ed okay. on number three. And because Deb is not here, she gets all three. <laughs> no, she'll go yes. with yes. number two with Kim. And we'll wait for our newest member to so think one, about so it. So which one is it? Do we have two for everybody and then? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, two. So that would be good, Charlie. Then pick one, and we've already got two for all, and then you, we can kind of fold you into the process. That's yeah. really great. Yeah. You just pick one. Okay. I'll go wherever you think uh, needs more. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and I and I guess not jumping in um, on top of you know appreciating Nathan's um, leading this conversation, but suggesting that maybe if we could meet. <laughs> before next December and just have, get some ideas on on paper so that when we have you know our session we're a little bit of a jump start using this I mean I think there's this is an improvement upon we don't we're not starting from scratch um, what do you think vice chair sticks well and Alexa do you want to participate in this as well in one of them or maybe collaborate with all three. I can be the all three person if you'd like. I think it would be helpful for me to kind of see okay, how okay. everything flows. Yeah, so. so groups, make sure you're looping Alexa in when you're having your meetings. Um, I mean, we could just make it easy, a Zoom meeting, you know, just the easy conversations. We don't, it's not. Oh, like Kim and I just had phone calls, simple phone calls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now that we're okay. in person again, you can also meet at Starbucks and have a nice, you know. And then we will, as we're planning the agenda, I think we just plan for um, Kelly, if we plan for next, and and Alexa, and I, that we plan to have a, a working session as part of our meeting next month. And is everybody available next month? I know Amy's not, but. And do you all have a copy of this online? Hard copy. Online co I don't mean a hard copy, online copy. I will email it out to everyone right after this meeting. Okay, perfect. That's awesome. Thank you. Okay. Vice Chair Six, anything else that you would like to? I don't think so. Good job. Okay, great. Uh, I, th I think we'll plan, we'll do our agenda planning as we normally do, but I would say maybe the last hour of the our meeting next month. Yeah, I mean, like first hour will be regular business because I don't think we're going to have a heavy business agenda, and then have an hour where we can. Okay, so that's for the December fourteenth. So, okay, and the photographs will be there. It's. The photographer be here at six. Yep. Yep. I, I did respond back to Paul that I was unable to be there even for the six o'clock, unfortunately. Yeah, I think there were some um, clashes with the photographer's schedule as well, so it's been a bit a little messy. <laughs> 
So we'll take your picture and then we'll Photoshop it. So everyone dress up. Patty, is there a specific deliverable you want us to bring back or? No, I think, I, my, I mean, my suggestion is just to have a conversation, just kind of connect, okay, this is my, our, you know, your focus. Which one are you, number three? Ed and I are number three. Yeah. Number three, just to get some ideas exactly. in your head, and then we'll just move forward with that when we meet next. Um, so it could be a phone conversation and, and looking at the bullets and, and what we had from last year, add, delete, you know. That's not, it doesn't need to be complicated. Does that work? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, no, no. It's just, it just let the, like, we're a new group. Let's have a conversation. What are we thinking? And then we can bring that to the table. And then with the agenda planning, we'll develop a little bit of a format. Again, I think pretty straightforward. We, we're, We've done this together <laughs> for a couple of times around, and so, um, and then really we just need to be um, comfortable with the what that we will have for, and Alexa will help us put together the PowerPoint for the um, joint meeting, and that will be something that we'll review in our January CAC meeting. And then our conversations will just be the background for if we have questions or you know, be able to support our um, the conversation when when we meet with council. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. um, okay. So with that, um, do we have anyone waiting for us for public comment? Not on my end. Okay, so we will then um, you know, try to get together for a little bit of a strategic conversation before our next meeting, and we will meet on December 14th, 6 o'clock, for uh, photos, and then we'll have our regular meeting with a working session thereafter. And... With that, unless any additional comment, we can adjourn. Thanks to all. Warn me next time. And please, I brought some treats, so help yourself before you leave. Thank you. Thank you. Because we all need a little sweet. That sweet tooth.